Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. Guys, this is week, I think 11, <laughs> week 11 for the new member uh, webinar every single you know Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the recorded Q and A at the end. I really want to just do some free talk. I just showed you guys MIC, the platform, everything. Now let's get into some psychology. Now let's get into some, I think a little bit of charts, not really because my charting platform is not really working today on this computer. And I don't even want to show that many charts because I've been doing that for the last like three or four or five weeks. So now I want to talk into some really cool psychology things. I've got some bow advice for you guys that say the I said a couple things, but now let's get into free talk. What do you guys want to talk about today? Does anybody have specific questions that they want to ask? Did you, did, was that clear in the webinar of everything I talked about? Do you have any last minute questions? Let's, who wants to talk about something? Reach out right here. What should we talk about? What should we start with? And if you guys have nothing to write, then I can just start on riffing on a lot of stuff. Who's got some questions? I know somebody does. And if you guys don't, that's cool. I can start ripping. <laughs> I just did a whole lecture on the hard stops. Let's, uh, here, you know what I could do? Check this out. I'm going to pull up. So this is one of the coolest things that we put together in a while. This is Bao's bested decades of experience advice, true value on how to start. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown this to the public before, so this would be a great way to show you guys what we do at MIC and kind of like what Bao's thought process is, what he's learned over the years and why this is so important. So, you know, me and Bao kind of talked and I was like, hey Bao, why don't you write out in a new member channel one day what your process is, what to look for and what new traders need to pay attention to. So let's go through this, seriously, let's go through a lot, a lot of this. Bao says his alarm is set at 4 a.m. Um, every single day. That's Western time, so you know, Eastern Standard Time, 7.08. He goes by market time every time. Then he checks his scanners within MIC. And the thing about the scanners, guys, is if you're paying for a scanner right now and you're not a part of MIC, I can almost guarantee you it's a waste of money. We've got a watch list channel. We've got 900 members all looking at the same thing. And I don't even use a scanner anymore. So, but if you do, look at the scanners, then look at locates. He brushes his teeth, does a bowel movement. He does this every single day. It's like his religion, right? He's going to be in his desk by 4.45 a.m. And he's going to go through the, through the low hangers. What is a low hanger exactly? So to give you guys an example, I took a, I took a picture of this today. This is my watch list for today. These were the low hangers this morning. AR, ACRS from yesterday. This was the levels I wanted to hit today. And I marked this in chat. You can go back and look at the chart and see if this worked for you. But I like this. Uh, and LNK, this was a low hanger just at day one. Uh, Capra was a bit of a low hanger from yesterday. So this is the level I was interested in. OPTT. And again, we like to teach at MIC perfect entries in outer lines. So if you guys are paying attention to um, a lot of our entries or a lot of our charts, we don't really chase stocks too much. We like to pay attention to what's called perfect orders. So just to give you an example, if, if these are out of reach or like, wow, talks like these are really high levels. Do you even think the stock can make it here? I'm not interested down here. I'm interested in this point. I'm interested in this point. If the stock does not get there, I don't care. A miss is a miss. This is not going, going to go against my psyche. It is not going to go against my confidence because a miss is just a miss. If I were to go, oh man, I, I'm just super tempted to hit down here and not wait for my order scales in here because this is the area I want to scale. If I'm like, I'll chase it down here because it looks like it's breaking down. Then this thing rips up on me in the morning and now I'm adding with an average at 170, but now I'm adding into two versus getting in at 195 or two to start, um, maybe up to 215. That's going to set me back. Do you understand? This is waiting for the perfect entry. So if this just declines and I don't get a short right here, I don't care. That's the whole point. It's having the patience and the discipline to do certain things. So this is how we play low hangers and outside and fantasy order lines. 
So, you know, Bow does the, the low hangers. Cobra has a lot of free locates, guys. You're going to save yourself so much money. So call Cobra, open an account, and get the MIC discount. Now, uh, so up until open, he is researching new plays and low hangers for lines, areas of interest. What are our lines? We like to talk about. If a chart is front side of the move, right, like, like SPI was this morning, you are looking at daily chart lines because, they're, because nothing's conformed. This is what's called conform to the lines. I inputted these lines and areas of interest today because these were the fail zones of the previous day where the volume is. If you guys noticed, right here, right here, right here, and right here, each chart is specifically designed in a certain level that I'm interested in. And I like to go where the volume is in the previous tops. I'm not gonna talk about too much about charting today, like I said, but as you guys can see from day one, you see this line right here? This is a huge consolidation area. Like, yes, there's a little bit of dip down here, whatever. I'm paying attention to the middle ground right here. The previous red to green line, so like the previous close is a huge level, red to green, and also where the air would come out of the proverbial balloon if I were to pop the balloon and whole and half dollar numbers. So I liked this area. On this one, I liked this area. I thought that this was a lot where a lot of volume was. If people got out of here that were stuck long from day one, this is where they'd want to get out. Maybe a little bit here, but I consider this an inner line. I'm not interested in inner lines. I'm interested in the perfect setup or I miss. Same thing with NLNK here. This is where the tops were, the fail zones where the stock failed, and also the consolidation point. I'm not looking for right here and right here. I'm looking for right there. And second with this, this is where a lot of the move was made. And because this is over this consolidation area, and I need room to come down. A lot of this move is already over, so I need to put it in a point where there is room to come down. Again, a miss is just a miss. So back to psychology. And hopefully this is all clear for you guys. Um, so then I narrowed down the list top of top plays of top three. If you're looking at 20 stocks, guys, narrow down the top three. Float is very important. Watch the Trading Fish DVDs. These are all questions in the videos. So Bao will wake up early, research his plays, as well as locating hard to borrow stocks to short. He plans all of his trades. His trades are pre-planned before he clicks a single button. So like I said, guys, this was a chart from yesterday, right? Oh, not this one. Hold on one second. I'll show you. Um, this was a chart from yesterday that I posted, Capper. Um, and, I, and I was on a phone call with a member that I wanted to talk about this chart specifically. So there are ways to gauge perfect entries and exits or inner lines or outer lines. Again, where are the fantasy orders? Bao and myself and Alex and a lot of our moderators are putting up orders every single day called fantasy orders. What is a fantasy order? A fantasy order is in a preset limit, maybe set here, 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 wherever you want your fantasy orders to be, but I go by the lines. So I'm gonna show a lot within this chart. I save this because it's such an unbelievable example of not only what backside is, overhead and baggies, inner, outer lines, but where to draw the lines based on previous tops. So again, this is a very good lesson that took me many years to learn, but once I learned it, price action is king. I'm not a fundamental player. It's all in the freaking chart and where longs are going to want to get out so you can maximize short and pay attention to demand and volume. Uh, I sound like a broken record, but it is what it is. When a stock is up, this is what I'm looking at. If it's failing pre-market, now I'm looking at pre-market lines. The daily chart lines are not as coherent anymore. I'm not really paying attention to those. Where am I paying attention to? I'm talking about the fail zones. That's a top. These are topping action right there, right there. This is a top right here. It kept hitting this point and it failed. It failed from here. It failed from here. I'm paying attention to these tops. That is a top. Does that make sense? I'm going to go really slow for you. Trading is not easy, but it's simple as fuck. This is a line. Yesterday, this stock hit exactly this first inner line and failed because it's a line of resistance. It failed here. There's no coincidence that it hit exactly here. Now, I don't like inner lines. While Bao and Alex hit this level, I was waiting for this level. I was going to scale in here. Now, it doesn't always make it to your fantasy orders, but again, a miss is a miss. But where's the safer trade? The safer trade is right here because a lot of volume's here, and this is a bigger move to the upside and more bag holders to create selling pressure. So while I wanted it to come at least to this line, while it didn't, you can play inner lines, that's up to you. But again, I like outer lines. And here's our concept of line to line. These three lines are somewhat closer together. So if the stock is gonna rip up to here at about 342, I'm gonna scale 342 to 370. I'm gonna scale this entire move. I'm gonna scale this move with a risk here and a stop out right here, a hard stop. 
Now, if these were not close together and this was the line and this was the line only, I am now, say I hit the inner line and it ripped through, I'm cutting it because this is four levels of resistance, guys. Or if I'm starting to scale here, that's three. This is now four, right? So if I'm starting here, that's three. If there were only two, that's a big, big, big air pocket without resistances or ceiling, so to speak, where the, you know, Val likes to give a, give a comparison or analogy of a guy jumping on a bed in an in a apartment building. If he's on floor one and then this is floor four, he's got a lot of ceilings to go through to get to floor four. But what if this was level two and this was, or sorry, this was floor two and this was floor three? There's a big area that he could just, you know, there's no resistance, so it could keep going up. That trampoline or that bed, he's just gonna spring up until this level. So again, if this is far from this line and there's no in middle resistance points, I'm gonna cut at this line and re-attack here. That is going from line to line. If all three are close together, I'm gonna scale the lines. A lot of members ask that. Again, I'm giving away a lot for this free <laughs> webinar, but let's go back to process. Um, Val will place his fantasy orders on all the plays he likes. Like I just showed, the fantasy orders, guys, are already placed. I'm placing them up there. You know, they're not filled, but they're sitting and waiting. Next, he will rank them so he can size the best and forget the rest. Is Capper or is Spy an A plus or is it a B or is it a C? I do, I am in a place in my career, I almost trade like a retired trader. I trade every single day. But I, well, not every, obviously I'm a full-time trader and I show up every day, but I'm not necessarily taking a trade every single day. And why is this important? Because I don't give a fuck about missing. I don't experience FOMO. I'm immune to this shit. I'm numb to it. I want my area of interest or I don't give a shit. I will walk away. I want, look, Alex's problem, and he's always talked about, is he has a thing with FOMO. If somebody's making money and he's not, he has a problem with that. I do not. You can make a million dollars and I don't give a fucking rat's ass. Anybody. I don't care. I don't compare myself to others. I don't have FOMO. I have different problems. And, you know, well, we can go into those all day, just like Joey the Juice Man or Alex or Tom or Aravin. Everybody's going to have their own weaknesses in trading. My personal weakness is a cocky trade, which I'm going to talk about soon. I know I'm kind of riffing on a lot of stuff, but pay attention. Alex is his FOMO, so he sometimes will size down or chase a level, but he'll go such small size to get that out of his system so he can size the best level. I don't care about all that. I'm hitting the best levels or I'm not trading. Does that make sense? So size the best levels or setups and scalp the rest. So if I do chase something small down here, it might be really small size that I just want to get my toes wet. I just want to get a feeler and most of 90% of the time, I don't even do that because I want, again, let me pull it up. I want, I want this level of bag holders. I don't want this level. I don't give a fuck about them because here's what happens. Rips up to here, a, you know, a, a pumper, a, another chat pumper gets a hold of this and rips it up to here. I don't want to be adding into where my original plan was on scales when, and ruining my average. So now my average is at 230 and I've already got ads on. I want my starter to be here. So if it goes up to this perfect area, I'm full size. And I expect to move back down here because there's a lot of bag holders. That's key. So again, guys, it's all in price action. Anybody that thinks level two and thinks that fundamentals are going to save you, you're dead wrong. Are they edges in your trading and can they offer a lot of benefits? No fucking doubt. No doubt. Absolutely 100%. They can help you. I would never bash fundamentals and I would never bash level two. Will it be a determining factor in you going from consistency to cons from inconsistency to consistency? Hell no. Hell no. It, but price action will teach you how to go from inconsistency to consistency. I could trade for the rest of my days, the next 80 years, well, I'm 29, so maybe 70, maybe 60 years, God. <laughs> I could trade for the next 60, 70, 80 years without level two and without, um, without fundamentals for the rest of my days. All I need is price action. Um, uh, I will, I will get here. I'll tell you right now, buddy. I'll give it to you right now. There you go, guys. Downloadable content. Val's best advice. See what we do for MIC members, man. You can literally have it right now. So now you can download that. So let's go through this together. Let's keep going through. You got to remind me to stay on track. Cause I know I get, I get a <laughs> go all over the place. Val will place fantasy orders, boom, rank them so he can size the best, scout the rest. Because when the stock gets there, you already know your plan. You know your scales, you know your ads, you know your hard stop, and you know when you need to fail. 
If you wing it, you will lose every time. Every time I try to nail everything that moves, I will screw them all up. I'm the same, guys. Alex is the same. Nailing one play is better than screwing up five. When starting out, paper trade, learn the mechanics. And after, then after being comfy, go with real money after starting with, you know, tiny size. So, guys, the journey of a trader who knows nothing. Go to a simulator for a month. Watch our videos. Get a foundation of learning. Then, you know, after a month of paper trading or two weeks or whenever you feel you're ready, go in with 100, 200 shares of real money. You're not, it's not about making money in the beginning. What it's about is getting the feeling of the emotions in check because in paper money, the reason why I win every trade or you win every trade or he wins every trade when we all paper trade in the beginning of our journey, then when we went to real, it was hard is because six years ago when we all, or when me and Alex paper trade or you guys or this and that, it, you're always right. There's no emotions. You know how to play the chart when you're paper trading. And that's the hardest struggle between new traders is they're playing their p &L. If you guys learn to not play your p &L, I can't even tell you how much your world will open up. Play the freaking chart. Play the lines, man. There's nothing else. Now, keep risk management in check and know how much you're down. Maybe you calculate that in your head. But if you're just staring and obsessing over your p &L while you're in the trade, you're going to lose. I mean, you're going to lose. It's hard. It's too hard. It goes in your head and it says, fight or flight, back to our reptilian brain. You're losing money. You're dying. You're dying. You need to cut this thing or it's going to kill you. There's venom in the snake that just bit you. You're going to fucking die unless you cut this loser. That's what your reptilian brain is going to tell you. Does that make sense? Or if you're looking at P&L, when you look at P&L and you're even up in the money or up in the green, it's going to tell you, Fight or flight, again, reptilian brain, you're in the money. This is called surviving. You better take that $10. You better take that $1,000 when you really want 200 out of that trade for small accounts or the guy that makes 1,000 really wants 10,000. So it all boils down to our caveman brains that have not changed in 1,000 years, man. So play the, play the chart. When starting out, paper trade, learn the mechanics, then after being comfy, go to real money and play with small size. When you find consistency with this small size, then you increment up slowly and increase your size, but don't size up until you are consistent. Do your homework, classwork by watching videos, then observing. You don't want to gamble. It is all iterative process, meaning back and forth, refine your process. Guys, we're constantly learning. After six years of trading, seven years, I'm still a student. Bao's still a student. If I were to tell you I was God tomorrow and Bao's God and Alex is Zeus, we'd be full of shit, man. We're still learning ourselves. While you know we may be better traders than a lot of other traders or the 90%, sure. We put in the time, we figured this out. But again, guys, we're learning. Everybody's still learning. That's the whole point. You gotta adapt or you're gonna die. Uh, start with paper trail. Oh yeah, so he goes in that. Uh, when starting out, just observe and watch, man. Back to us later, you know, just observe and watch. Get your screen time in, watch these lines, watch our areas of interest, watch our watch list, the charts that we post. There's a reason why I posted this as my lines each day. So pay attention to things like that. Uh, see what others are doing and find a tab partner. Don't do this alone. Trading is a very, very, very lonely uh, career, but it doesn't have to be. It's just that by nature because, you know, unless you're working in a prop firm, you're alone in your bath mat or your bathrobe or maybe balls, you know, laying out and you're not in anything at all. Like, I don't know, but you're, in a, you're trading alone. So the whole point is find a partner in crime, man. DOS has a free paper trading account, guys. It's phenomenal. We don't have a partnership with DOS or anything. I'm still promoting this because it's so good. Get, go to DOSTrader.com, join their paper account if you're brand new and, and learn for $100, $150 a month. And don't risk your hard-earned money on something you don't even know how to do yet. It drives me nuts when new traders come in tomorrow and they're like, bro, I, I lost $2,000 out of my $30,000 account. What do I do? I don't even know what lines are. I'm like, oh my fucking God, dude, what is it? There's a lawyer go into a big trial or is, it, is he even allowed unless he knows all the laws and rules? No, or a doctor does not go into brain surgery until he learns scalpels and, and all the shit on how to do that stuff. He becomes Dr. Strange first and then he operates on somebody. Uh, paper trading is like practicing before you play on NFL Sunday and even the NFL players, the fucking major leaguers, man, the, the pro athletes, are still practicing all week before the big game and they have a hundred million dollar contract deals so there's no excuse for you every single week and i'm gonna be a little blunt and i'm gonna point you in the face and say why aren't you back testing why aren't you studying and refining your process so yes i'm talking to all i'm talking to myself even put in the fucking time just because you're consistent doesn't mean and doesn't mean you're done you need to learn every day 
uh, and network with guys, man. We got a community built on this to stay better, to get better, to keep being better. Best version of yourself. When you're not trading well, bench yourself back to the practice field, just like pro sports athletes. Remember, in the beginning, it's not about making money, man. It's about learning this and doing the proper foundational learning so that you can do this for the next 80 years. Bro, we've got traders in here that are 20 years old making $500 a day, $2,000 a day, 18 and 20 years old. What will they be able to accomplish by the time they're 60 and 70? Like, just imagine that. Your 100 shares at the beginning should just pay your commission structure. So, better to pay $1 for a trade than lose $100 to learn each time. And tell me that's not true. Uh, get a broker with per share commission structure. This is big. Do not use TD and E-Trade. I'm not trying to slam them, but I mean, my God, they charge set six, $7, whatever it is for an entry and an exit. You're going to pay $14. Yet if you go with Venom or Cobra Trading, bro, with 100 shares or 1,000 shares minimum, or, uh, you know, uh, if that's what you're, you're going to pay a minimum of $1. Like $7, come on, man. So these are just ridiculous. Even if you use 50 shares or 100 shares or 100,000 shares with TD, you're going to pay a minimum eight bucks. What a rip, dude. Too many want to start banging keys and trading when they have no clue what they're doing. Why? This is gambling. We are not gamblers. When you learn to trade, it is not gambling. You are making money with high probabilities, educated risk, as we call it. If you want to gamble, go to Vegas. Uh, don't worry too much about PDT too much when you start out because you want to enter only the high probability setups. Like I said, outer lines, uh, day two continuation plays. It's better to make two trades for $100 than 10 trades each day for $20 each. And then you risk a lot of losses in mental capital and then fatiguing and burning yourself out and treading water and then eventually quitting trading. Don't risk this by this with subpar setups. Go with the best. Um, Problems when you make nine wins for $20 each, the one red loss day you will lose 200. Facts. Your losses need to be much smaller than your wins. It's okay to lose three times $20 loss and then make one win for $100 and you're still up. It's a game of probability. Holy shit, $7 E-Trade, man. Yikes. Uh, for new traders, that, that'll eat you up, bro. That'll eat you up. Uh, this is why they say size the best, forget the rest. Hardest skills to develop, but essential if you want to stay in the game. Must be okay with missing a trade and not over trading. This is avoiding FOMO. Must be okay with taking small losses before that one mother of all big losses that maybe the cocky trade comes about. Must be robotic and systematic. Follow your process and plan. Stay humble or the market will humble you. The best comes with experience. You will trade and then go back to your trades to see what works and what doesn't. In the beginning, you do not or yeah, you do not know what works for you, you have to do it. You have to be afraid to lose because your process has risk management, which has stops in place. So before you enter a trade, you need to analyze your risk, meaning you need to know when to take a loss so you know what to expect already. If you cannot handle the loss, it means you're trading too large. So size down and give yourself a wider range. I will help you learning with all this. You know, we can get on daily calls if you remember, stuff like that. But the use of stops is vital in which I will you know, reiterate because I use them every day in my trading and how they keep me staying safe. This is why 100 shares, for example, you can learn all about this stuff without losing your mind or your account. Get a tab, learn together. Always use market stops. A limit stop will not always fill you. It'll rip through and not fill at your target price. A market stop will guarantee get you out if there's enough volume. Uh, so only play stocks with enough volume, obviously. While a market stop will incorporate some slippage, again, it is a fail safe, a plan B, an exit strategy, and a guarantee fill on most cases. Uh, because you want to get out, dude, if you're wrong, get out. Cut the loss early. Limit stops will not fill you all the time. Learn where to properly stop out on the chart, not based on P&L. Uh, you do not want to stop out where the sheep and the herd mostly do. If you are shaken out by 10 cent moves, your size is too large. If you need to size appropriate, you need to size appropriately for, for the trade. Uh, here's the advice I give a my investing club member, which may help someone. So I'm sharing it. Best of luck to everyone on their journey. Now I'll send this to a member. I suggest you lower your size and let the stock work longer. So if you are shaken out by five, 10 cents, you can reduce your size so that 10 cents won't hurt you. If I think your size too large, you need to be able to be down 20 cents or even 30 and be okay with remember range. These stocks have range as pertaining to float and other factors. You need to size appropriately to handle this range, be it 20, 30, 40 cents, whatever it is, line to line, like I showed on that example. 
you need to be able to handle line to line in terms of range, so I think your size is too large. Some stocks, guys, range, there are more important, are, I'm sorry, some stocks range are more than others is the point, so you need to know how to read that. Uh, you know, like if I pull up this, for example, there's a lot more range in something like, um, uh, something like ACRS yesterday than something like NLNK. The move is literally within like 30 cents here. The move could be in 40, 60, 70 cents here. So again, know the range. And then Yuma was a ton of range. So sometimes stocks skip dollars. You got to know this stuff. Sometimes uh, someone asked me, I always stop at, at the top, et cetera. So that was my advice. Read the screenshot on the proper sizing. Trading is mostly mental discipline. Be patient, let the trade setup come to you, and don't keep adding the losers. Remember, you need only a, good, a few good trades a day or a week to make your daily pay or your weekly pay, so stay patient. So try it tomorrow. Be super patient and stock for those perfect setups, that perfect setup to set the trade. Concentrate on the entry, and everything will be much easier. Myself, personally, I'm always focused on entries. Exits, I can always work on and set hard stops and walk away and eliminate emotions, but entries is where it starts, guys. So use stops. Sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go, and this is the last thing in this, in this uh, PDF. Go back and analyze your trades. See what types of trades you are more consistently profitable with. Eliminate those trades you are consistently, consistently losing. Eliminate 50 out of 50 trades. Uh, start with smaller size. You'll experience that that smaller size can get you to hold longer and let your game play out better and not get shaken out with the slightest movements. If you're constantly too nervous, it means your size is too large. If you're constantly stopping out the top or the bottom, it means that you're a part of the herd. What you're doing, the herd is doing. So think about what you can do. Start slower, smaller size, start later. More patience to wait longer, more room and a fudge factor. Consistency is the ultimate name of the game for a successful trading career. Consistency starts with one day. Aim for one green day at a time, and then two, and then three, and four. Confidence will build, good habits will form, trade correctly, and profits will follow. Don't chase the profits. Chase trading well, and the profits will come. As consistent as you may think you are, do not let the one trade wipe you out 10, 20, 365 days of gains. Per gain, percentage of wins is meaningless, and that is why, uh, and, and this is if the 1% loss wipes out 90% of your gains. So it's all in the experience, guys. Um, and I put together something on this recently, which I want to read. Uh, I did this yesterday, and it had a lot of good feedback. Listen to this. So I got a lot of reaction on it. A lot of people recognize with this, sympathize with this, and understood it. The cocky trade. Let me break this down for you as this has been my biggest hurdle from minute one for the last five to six years. Finally getting over it way now in my career, but late because of one freaking factor, hard stops. The problem with this game being so mental is that when you have a gnarly green streak, 20 days, three months, et cetera, whatever it is, as this can be very, very relative to the person and their process, you start to loosen the purse strings a bit. At least in your mind, the oh, fuck it, I'll add more and more. The I'll just give it a bit more room. I'll give it a mental stop. The I don't need a hard stop. I've made so much. The I can do no wrong thinking. Let me size up. Then one trade always comes along. You break your process. You add, add, add. You do not cut that loser. And let me tell you, just cut the fucking stock. It's all in the process. I treaded water the first three years of my career, not because of consistency problems. I never had consistency problems. What I had, well, because I obsessed, I stayed 14 hours a day for the first three years. I was always on top of my shit. And, um, and I kept risk management in check except for that one trade because I didn't ever have hard stops because I never cut that one fucker that ripped on me and I kept adding. Moral of the story, each new day is a new day. Do not bring yourself into the mix. And do not bring yesterday in the mix. For the love of God, respect risk put a stop in, and I need to shout this out from the rooftops, but do not readjust that, that in panic. That is panic. Respect the plan and stop out where you pre-plan. If I had done this for, six, for the last six years, I would have a truckload more money, maybe my own bank, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm passionate about this topic because this was my personal T. Bradley 90s career's biggest hurdle in trading is I'd be right every day for three uh, 30 days, two months, three months, whatever. And then, boom, that one trade came along. I thought, you know, my shit didn't stink and add, 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 and then I was screwed. So, you know, guys, it's about risk management. It's about showing up the next day. And it's about being prepared for any move.
Oh man, I winded myself. Who's still here? Who's still uh, listening? <laughs> so was that clear, guys? I wanted to go over almost everything psychological based today. Just introduce you guys into how to think when trading, how to get started, and uh, you know, I, I hope that helped, man. I, I really, I really do. Uh, we can go over charts next week when my can get my shit back working. Um, right now, guys, we have a uh, we have a thirty minute beginners course at alextomiz.co. We have a more advanced course and also simultaneously beginners course at myinvestingclub.co. So both, alexdemiz.co, myinvestingclub.co. Check them out, sign up, watch them. They're amazing. They're going to help you. Uh, now, how to contact. We're a community, a family of brotherhood guys and everything in between. You're not just another member or a number in MIC. We go out of our way to help you and, and really guide your hand every single week, every single day. Uh, our, our, our information and contact, mine really quick, is obviously uh, the main one is Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. If you have any questions about upgrading, if you're already a member, uh, any kind of anything, contact me, uh, how to get started, uh, DM any of my personal accounts. Um, my Twitter, you know, there's my email. Twitter is tbradley90. Uh, Instagram is tbradley90 underscore trader. Um, here's my investing club. And here's Alex. Here's Bao. Um, schedule a call with us today, man. Uh, if, you're, if you're really on the fence about MIC or you're like, yo, what differenti differentiates you guys? Um, how can I get started? Guys, I'll get on the phone with you. I No shit. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me an email. And I'll help you guys, man. I hate when somebody joins a service who's brand new, knows nothing. They get conned out of $5,000 of their hard-earned money. They go broke and now they're like, oh my God, if I would have only found my investing club three months ago when I had spent $5,000 on useless DVDs, that's why I'll literally get on the phone with you guys. I swear to God, man, I really care. So we all do, man, but we're here to help you guys and I cannot speak this more highly. Um, we're here for your journey, man. Ah, thanks, buddy. Trust me, guys. Tosh, well, <laughs> great advice. Thanks, buddy. Tom, thanks, guys. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions, we can talk about for sure. Does anybody have a last minute kind of question or two uh, we can get into? But that is the that is the PowerPoint. That's the new member orientation webinar. We do these every week. Next week, I'll go over big time charting. And I just want to show you guys we're here for you, man. It's a great community. If you're not a part of it, really, really think about it. <clears throat> we got a team. We got a fucking team to help you guys, man. Yes, we curse. Yes, we're non- not that polished. Yes, we are normal guys. We are three traders who one day said, you know what, man? We are too knowledgeable to not share this and pass the elevator back down. Let's create a really cool community and, and get it to where we got it. So, dude, we're not polished all the time. We do curse. We do dress normal. Fuck, I, me and Val wear the same clothes every single day. Val's in like, like Cole's black shirts. I'm in, you know, like mock neck shirts usually white or black or brown or gray and like we're not show-offy we're not fancy we're just normal guys man but we know how to trade and we most importantly know how to help you guys and get you started in your trading career we got a monster ass team chip shorts and t-shirts hell yeah did i wear a backwards trucker hat every single day i just got a new one though that is mic in fact god did i is there any how do i i know i posted it recently hold on where is it uh, I know I posted it. Hold on. I got to show you guys the new hat. It's so sick. Where is it? I know. Oh, look at this. I just got this made. How sick is this, man? How freaking sick is this? This is a custom job that I got made. Uh, you guys aren't going to get this exact hat, but you guys get something similar. But now I got my new, I rep my brand, my new MIC hat, and it's the coolest shit ever. And I, I just love it. I had to, I had to, I had to upgrade from the WM hat. <laughs> Love it. Nope, not fitted, buddy. Uh, trucker hat, so uh, uh, snapback. Um, but we can we can make fitted hats for you guys. So if you guys want that, we can we can make that logo on a fitted hat for you guys. Reach out to Oliver. Yeah, reach out to this guy. Reach out to Oliver. Mem or Billy. Yep. I need to order one. Nice. Joey. Yeah, man. They're sick, aren't they? I got, I got like a red one too, man. I got, dude, the sickest freaking hats, man. How sick is that? Oh shit. I, I'm not going to be able to find it again, but I love it, dude. 
And get an MRC mug, man. We have the coolest mugs too. And we know we make no money in our store, guys. If anything, we lose money. And we're probably just giving all that money to charity anyways. You know what it's about? It's about so you guys can can just support our brand. And we all, it's a community, guys. We're a country club. We're a five-star resort. We're not just the freaking 24 hour down the way. We're a full on like full service country club, man, with a spa, a freaking a uh, shop, you know, like uh, tennis, golf, like <laughs> baseball, like everything, man. If I get basketball, like we want you guys to come and be a part of something that's so much more beyond trading. You know, guys, we got, oh my God, we got real estate guys in here. We're working on real estate stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I've got shorts, I've got hat. <laughs> awesome, dude. Not the out <laughs> of the fitted one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so we just, we got, we got so much cool stuff for you guys, man. Just check it out. Here, I'll show you guys the shop real quick. If you guys want to see, I don't usually pull this up in the, uh, things anymore, but check this out guys. Check this out. We got a shop. We got a ton of cool stuff. We got like phone cases and stuff, but, uh, cause we're not here to seem like, like salesmen guys. You can come buy this stuff if you want. We don't make money on this, but it's super cool. Like we just got cool stuff, uh, mouse pads and stuff, new arrivals. I know we got some cutting boards inside Game of Thrones. How sick is that? Fishing orders? Like, uh, that's so cool, man. I'd rather be fishing. I love that. All right, question. So lines on, so lines on day charts are better for front side uh, SR trading, and then you switch to, yes. Perfect question, Menard. Um, yeah, fun shirt. Uh, here's what I do, man. When a stock is like SPI in the morning, right? It's all front side. You are going to, because it's not conformed to anything, you're going to want to pay attention to the daily chart. So you want to pay attention to the resistance lines as Alex posts. I think, uh, God, maybe I can find it. Um, let's see what Alex posted today. I, let's see if I can find it. Uh, where was it? Uh, it was SPI. Shit, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it because I don't remember what time he posted it. I mean, I could, hold on one sec. Alex posted a chart that was the daily, where are you? Oh, well, here, I'll just show you mine. This was front side of the SPI that I put, keep it simple, stupid. I'm only interested in this if it's breaking this line, like a death line, right? Like 330 or maybe 320 given upon if you want to get a little bit more risk. Uh, with this, I'm not looking to short front side. This is a fool game. But if you do, it's in the daily chart lines. That's the safest place. So it's going to conform to those. But when things already start breaking down, like again, last time I'll show this, is when things are already breaking down pre-market, now it's already conformed, the volume and everything is conformed to these lines, and these, when it pops up back to these, so now I'm paying attention to those. Intraday, I'm paying attention to pre-market. Hope that's clear. All right, guys, I'm absolutely winded, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna cut it here. Six session today. I love that you guys keep showing up. Uh, let's do it again next week. We'll talk about some cool stuff and the current, um, the current runners of that day. But today I wanted to really boil down psychology so you guys have to differentiate between the weeks. But uh, thanks for showing up, guys. So much fun. Uh, good luck for the rest of the trading day. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week, man. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.